Evo released the original Eve Waterguard back in February 2020, and now the company is back with a thread enabled version. This release follows Eve's commitment to update most of its smart home lineup to support home kits over thread. A water leak sensor may not be the first home kit accessory that you would think of for your smart home, but the Eve Water Guard could be a device that saves you from water damage and the cost of repairs. The Eve Water Guard is available in the UK, US, EU, and Canada, along with Australia. It works via Bluetooth, but this new version also works with thread. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the design, the full install process end to end, along with what it's like to use within the Eve app, using it with HomeKit, and also some in-depth testing when it's exposed to water and how it reacts. And then finally, I'm going to touch on Thread versus Bluetooth and whether Thread does really offer any value for this device. Now, for full transparency, Eve did provide this device for review purposes. will, however, not influence the outcome of the review, and you'll hear both the good and the bad. You can read more about the review promise and ethics statements in the description below. So with all that out of the way, let's get into the video. Hi, welcome. Welcome to HomeKit Authority and my name is John. This channel is dedicated to everything HomeKit. We cover the latest insights, honest reviews just like this one, and also detailed tutorials. And if you like this video, don't forget to check out the rest of the channel as there's plenty of other videos on the home kit. And if you like what you see, then it'd be greatly appreciated if you join the community, hit the subscribe button, and also the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. So let's start with the design. The Eve Water Guard is identical to the previous generation, which comprises of a square white sensor unit. The front of the device features a recessed square, and behind that is a siren. Moving to the back of the device, this is where you find the LED ring that flashes red when the device detects water and a slot that connects the supply power socket adapters. One small improvement over the previous version, which I did call out in the original review, Eve has altered the design so when the UK adapter is attached to the Eve Water Guard, it's orientated the correct way up. On the bottom of the device, you find the sensor cable input plug, reset button, and the HomeKit setup code. Finally, the Eve Water Guard comes with a two meter sensor cable that plugs into the socket on the bottom of the device. At the end of the cable is a female aux port allowing the cable to be extended up to 150 meters. The cable features a nylon outer layer with the electrical element inside. Now moving on to install. Installing the water guard is straightforward and involves very few steps. You first attach the relevant power socket, and in my case, it's the UK version. Once the water guard powers up, the device should flash to let you know it's been activated. You then need to open up the OMAP on your iOS device and add accessory. You do this by tapping the plus sign and then add accessory. Then you start the pairing process by scanning the HomeKit code and then following the instructions on screen, which take you through adding to a room and also renaming the device if you want to. The last step is to insert the cable into the socket of the water guard and then you're ready to go. The setup process takes less than 10 minutes from opening the box to having it installed. Of course, depending on the installation process, it may take a little more time if you consider replacing this behind a washing machine, for instance, or another appliance, you do need to take that into account. So let's now jump into what it's like to use the water guard. Now the device is designed to work with the Eve app and HomeKit. So for completeness, I'll give you an overview of my experience of using it with both apps, along with the difference between Thread and Bluetooth. So starting with the Eve app, as with the previous generation, the water guard is designed for one purpose, and that is detect leaking water. So within the Eve app, the information is clear and presented well. If the app shows safe status, then no water has been detected. But if it detects water, you'll see an alert and you guessed it and you've probably got a leak and water has been detected. You also get the option to check the log of the water guard to look at past events, which is useful if you want to look back. And hopefully you won't be doing this often. In the settings, you can carry out a leak test to see if everything works correctly. I did this for when I first set up the device and you also can schedule reminders to give you a prompt to test the device. The water test is fully guided process and completed in a matter of minutes. Another new feature to call out on this particular version, the generation two, is if the water guard detects a problem with the cable. So if it's been accidentally dislodged, pulled out, or there is another problem, you'll get an alert in the app and it lets you know. However, it's worth pointing this out, it's only available in the Eve app and this is not available in HomeKit. As with other Eve products, the Eve water guard only works with HomeKit. The water guard is shown as a water detector in the OMAP and you get a push notification if your device detects water. Although you cannot mute the siren like you can in the Eve app, which I'll talk a little bit later on about, or access the device logs. It also allows you to create scenes or automations that trigger if it detects water, which is useful if the 
Eve Waterguard might not be visible, for instance, if it's behind a unit, and you can use the automation trigger lights in your home. It's also worth pointing out at this point, for those that are wondering, Eve does not expose a light or the siren to HomeKit. Now let's look at some performance tests and how it performs when water is detected. As with the previous generation, I am not willing to flood my house to test this device but I simulated some tests in the kitchen which involved placing the cable in my sink draining board and pouring 150 millilitres of water down the board. After the water came into contact with any part of the sensor, the water guard flashed red and activated the siren. I also got alerts to my iPhone by the Ohm app. It's also worth pointing out that only about 35 millilitres of water was needed to trigger the activation. Although the alerts come through to both apps, you are best operating device from the Eve app as you get a prompt to turn off the siren, which is useful given how loud the thing is. And this option is not available in Apple's Home app. Now to clear the alert, you simply dry the cable and the status will change from alert to safe. You can also remove the cable from a unit and this will stop the siren and again change the status to safe. While that test involved pouring the water on the cable, common leak is a, what's called a spring leak which produces a mist spray and whilst this seems harmless it will eventually build up and cause a lot of damage. So simulating this I used a spray to soak the area around the cable with about 150 millimeters of water. Although reaction time was not as instant as the first test it reacted quickly and only by using 10 millilitres of water which is more than enough to catch this type of leak and prevent any serious damage. Now let's look at OhmKit over Thread. The major upgrade to the EVE water guard is to bring Thread capabilities. However, it's worth pointing out I didn't experience any dropouts or delays when testing the previous generation for that review. But looking back on this, this may have been down to the number of HomePods and Apple TVs I had in my home which helped with the Bluetooth connection. So in this part of the review, I will compare Bluetooth versus Thread performance for both range and response times. But it's worth pointing out in order to use Thread capability you do need a HomePod Mini or the new Apple TV 4K at the time of this review. My first test for the e Water Guard involved testing response times and for this I placed both devices side by side. I then dipped both cables into a bowl of water. Both sirens and app notifications started at roughly the same time. So this shows to me that Thread is no faster versus Bluetooth for this device but it's worth pointing out I've only experienced Thread being faster over battery powered Bluetooth low energy devices. But because this device is always on via a main supply, then it does not need to wake up from sleep. My next test was about thread versus Bluetooth range performance. For this test, I placed both versions in my garage side by side and turned off all HomeKit hubs apart from one located in the kitchen, which is a HomePod Mini. The distance between the HomePod Mini and the kitchen and the garage is about 20 meters with two external walls, three internal walls and several appliances. This is where the thread version performed better as the Bluetooth version went to a no response state. And this takes me on to the next benefit. The Eve Water Guard also acts as a thread router in the network. This means the device can ex help expand the thread network and help with devices like the Eve Weather or other devices which are classed as endpoint devices that need the extra range if placed in the garden, for instance. So to wrap up this review and give you my summary, as with the previous generation, the Eve Water Guard enters a market that has several options available like the Eve Aqua leak sensor that I also reviewed, and that's coming above now. Whilst you can use both devices for the same purpose, they have different approach to how they detect water. And this comes down to personal preference, which approach you want to go with. But in my view, the Eve Water Guard is better suited to the larger area because of the cable approach. Plus the fact you can extend the cable to 150 meters, that means you can use one device to cover an entire room in one solution. But that being said, you do need a spare socket, and this might make the Eve Water Guard not the first choice if those are limited in the areas you're looking to put this device. Whereas with the Puck device, for instance, you can place these in locations and not have to worry about that because they are battery powered. I also like to have seen Eve updated the water guard with a power pass through feature. This would have been helpful if you are limited on plugs, but I can see why Eve didn't include this because of the number of appliances with different power ratings, which would push the cost up of, of, for a device that already commands a high price. The sensitivity of water is also a big plus for this device and you can catch leaks very quickly and prevent any further costly damage to your home. I also like that Eve are following on its commitments to support thread and can be used in a th as a thread node and as I've already mentioned this means that it can be used to expand your thread network, provide the extra range for the devices that are not so close. However owners of the previous generation may be questioning why Eve can't release a firmware update and well 
This is down to the fact the older generation does not have the hardware inside to support thread. So should I upgrade? If you already own the previous generation and have no issue with Bluetooth performance and range, then the EVE WaterGuard with thread support is a small upgrade for you. But if you don't, then this is a good option to consider. Plus you get a thread router device that can help expand your network. So that's a wrap on this review and hopefully you found it useful. And if you have, then give me a thumbs up as it greatly appreciated. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and check out our social media platforms at Follow HomeKit on Instagram and Twitter. And thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.